Well, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to come here. And uh, since we're talking about the different device and uh, different technology, so I have to first fess up. My name is not Laurent, and <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm not cool enough for that. Uh, but actually, I want to uh, share some of my initial experiences uh, learning and uh, using uh, another uh, very exciting new technology that uh, Microvention has brought to our uh, very exciting field. And uh, one thing I want to uh, slightly disagree or maybe amend what Adam has uh, said is uh, since we have the, the uh, evolution uh, of the, our endovascular technology and uh, uh, between the coil balloon and the regular stent uh, to web, and uh, there is an important step is the flow diverter. And uh, most of our interventionists all realize and how important uh, the flow diverting technology and uh, the device has changed our field and uh, changed basically a uh, therapy that uh, most of the time achieving 50, 60 percent of the success and uh, into well into the 80 and sometimes even 90. Um, let me see. Okay, uh, I'm from uh, Houston Methodist Hospital, and this is our hospital. And uh, I want to show, and uh, I am a consultant for microvention. And uh, these are the, the, the indication of uh, the FRED and the FREDX devices, which is really uh, indicated for the entire intracranial internal carotid artery for white neck and uh, uh, whether it's saccular or fusiform, and these are all well indicated as long as the, the blood vessel size is between two to five millimeter in adult patient. And uh, uh, over the last several months, and uh, building on the, the success of uh, FRED technology, and uh, we actually, Microvention has brought the, the FRED X technology with the, the surface modification. Um, and uh, these, uh, the FRED X, uh, just like the FRED system, has the both. 27 and the 21 system. The 21 system is uh, the only in the U.S. market that can have the 2.5 and the 3 millimeter devices to treating relatively smaller uh, vessel and that will require uh, flow diversion technology. Um, to me, the biggest uh, the advantage that the Fred X brought to our interventional community is uh, its design philosophy and it's some of its performance uh, metrics. And the most important the performance of this is uh, that it's a really simple and easy to use flow diverting uh, device com compared to what we all learned uh, over the last probably seven to eight years of the existing technology despite all the uh, evolution and uh, advancement. The FRED and FRED X is really a highly predictable, easy to use, and uh, so it really married the, just like the original design that married a very well designed uh, nano based uh, uh, stent with the flow diverter inside. And uh, this is just uh, the illustrate, uh, the showing that uh, the outer layer of the stent is really meant for the easy opening of the device. And uh, once uh, it's opened, and uh, it will like an umbrella and uh, pull up the uh, the shield and the tube, achieving the, the flow diversion effect. And uh, uh, one of the most important. Uh, ease to use is unlike many of the other uh, flow diverters and uh, the Fred X is basically you position where the device needs to be and uh, then starts to deploying it and uh, it rarely will require any major adjustment and uh, the device will listen to you and uh, without very much of the uh, sometimes very trying experience with other uh, flow diverting devices. Um, and uh, so to me, and uh, one of the, the not so appropriate example is a uh, FedEx is more or less like the, the, the airplanes or the fighter jet on the aircraft carrier and a, which can perform vertical takeoff and landing. And uh, you basically position where it is and uh, then uh, without too much of the trying and uh, usually it will open. And uh, unlike some many of the other devices, the major danger is uh, the middle of the distal part and not opening, twisted. And uh, in FredX, in my, uh, over the last several months of the experience, is quite uncommon. And I will leave, uh, the, let the uh, staff to talk more about the X technologies 
and uh, these. But uh, this is one of the uh, uh, scanning micro, uh, microscopy to showing the significant uh, reduced thrombogenicity in uh, Fred X compared to some of the more advanced uh, the flow diverting devices in the market in the, in the United States. And, uh, and uh, because of the, the surface modification and the device design, and uh, uh, this is the microvention provided the data to show that the physical force, both advancing and retracting the device is significantly reduced, which uh, certainly uh, increased our confidence in using these devices as well as the, uh, the safety. And uh, these are the, the typical uh, radiographic markers. And when you used the FRED devices and the FRED X, then to showing that because of the, uh, the markers at the proximal distal end, the double helix radio opaque markers, and uh, this device is highly uh, visible and uh, it's very easy to visualize. And uh, in the past, uh, I use uh, almost routinely have to use the, the Dyna CT or Vaso CT to visualize the, the opposition of the device with the the, uh, the vessel, but with uh, Fred X and uh, really yeah, it, it becomes much less frequently used. Um, and uh, the because of its ease of use and uh, the most important uh, lessons I learned and uh, I'm trying to show to my uh, resident and the fellows is and uh, this device really take away many of the other uh, complex maneuvers that you used in other uh, the uh, flow diverting technology and uh, you position where the microcatheter just maybe a millimeter or a couple millimeter more distal to where you want to land and they push the, uh, the device out and let the, the non-flow uh, non diverting portions to anchor the vessel and the then gently uh, combining the pushing of the device with unsheathing uh, about maybe 60 to 40 percent of the variation and uh, as long as the microcatheter to stay inside of the, the middle of the, the vessel and uh, the device actually will do the, the work for you instead of you have to manipulate the flow diverting the, uh, stent in with so much work. And uh, once you get to the final portion and uh, unsheath the, the distal or the proximal ends of it and uh, the device will open completely and uh, there's almost no need to re-catheterize and let the microcatheter to ride through the, the system to bump the system. And uh, it will usually open up very, very easily. So uh, I have a couple cases to share and uh, this is a typical uh, paraophthalmic uh, uh, carotid aneurysm and uh, you can see the, uh, the morphology of the, the aneurysm and it's elongated and, uh, and uh, it's really, really best to be treated with flow diverting technology. And uh, <clears throat> here is the uh, deploying and obviously under the, uh, we were looking at the uh, uh, roadmap images, but here it just uh, for easy to show, and I'm showing the unsubtracted view to see, and uh, the device get, uh, as I both the doing the, the unsheathing and the pushing, and uh, it just opens up almost like a regular stent that you would expect. And uh, when it's making the turn, and you just reposition the microcatheter into the middle of the, the vessel, and uh, it will start to occupy the, the vessel completely, and uh, then uh, continue to propagate. And uh, really, uh, very rarely, you have to do the unsheathing, resheathing, and the repositioning, wagging. Many of these maneuvers, and uh, that we are so accustomed to the existing other technology that we use. And uh, in Fred X, you really don't need to do any of those. And uh, this is another very typical uh, case, and you can see the very severe uh, tortuous anatomy of the, the carotid artery leading to the aneurysm. <coughs> and uh, uh, this is the, um, during the, the treatment, you can see uh, how much the deploying, once the, the uh, Fred X is in place, and how much of the, the uh, contrast stasis immediately will be achieved. And uh, this one actually get the Dyna CT just uh, to visualize and uh, uh, from uh, my initial experiences. And uh, this patient actually, 
uh, in uh, less than three months, and because of, as we can see, this very large ophthalmic aneurysm and uh, have a lot of headache, probably from the uh, throm uh, inflammation and the thrombosis, so actually, oh, it did not show the video, sorry. And uh, I actually did the follow-up angiogram that the aneurysm is completely occluded and without the, uh, compromising the parent vessel. Uh, another very similar, and uh, this is a cavernous carotid aneurysm, and uh, we can see uh, the uh, tortuous anatomy of the vessel. And uh, this is the, uh, again, the deployment to the uh, floral uh, in the row map, and uh, you can see position the microcatheter just at its distal position opening me up and uh, very little foreshortening and actually no foreshortening and uh, then the device will gradually but predictably reliably open up occupying the, the entire uh, vessel and uh, without doing too much of uh, the wagging that you typically would uh, use in the flow diverting technology. And this is the, the uh, immediate post-treatment can see the, the significant contrast stasis in the, the treat of the aneurysm. Um, another very similar case and uh, very dysplastic wide neck to the supraclinal the internal carotid artery aneurysm. Uh, again, the flow diverting technology will be uh, by far the, the most reliable and uh, uh, successful treatment options uh, for aneurysm like this. And uh, this is showing the uh, aneurysm uh, once it's uh, placed and how much uh, effect it's accomplished. This is the video showing, again, the deployment. Again and again, and what I see during these cases is uh, it's just so much easier to use uh, compared to the m traditionally when the flow diverting uh, technology we have to use. And uh, I do not have to open up the, the device in the M1, then drag it back into the carotid artery and uh, uh, to avoid the big jump that frequently we see in other technology. and. Uh, uh, you do not need to resheath the uh, stent very often, and uh, since uh, it usually behaves very predictably. Uh, and the one last thing is, uh, unlike many of the other uh, flow diverter devices, and uh, using post-deployment angioplasty is extremely uncommon using the, the FRED and FREDX technology. This is again the uh, post-treatment angiograms to show the uh, significant uh, contrast stasis in those patients. And uh, for the, uh, the interest of the time, I probably, this is again the very similar, all of these devices that they all behave very, very similarly and you can, oh, sorry. Um, this is a case the patient was, uh, previous subarachnoid hemorrhage and the uh, posterior communicating artery aneurysm was treated with coiling and uh, you can see uh, uh, over time at a six month follow up and uh, there is uh, significant recanalization at the neck. And uh, this is a, uh, the, from the, the carotid bifurcation to the aneurysm neck, the distance is very short again and uh, in order to spare the, the origin of the A1 and uh, uh, FredX is really providing a superb uh, deployment precision in the situation like this. And uh, this is the deployment uh, videos to show and uh, by positioning the microcatheter right at the carotid bifurcation and uh, you just uh, starts to open up the uh, FredX and uh, it does, has no jump at all and it just very smoothly and go across because of its stability and uh, really we do not, I find it's very rare to use a very long uh, the devices in order for the anchoring process or the calculating into the, the imprecision sometimes related to other existing uh, technology. And uh, this is the uh, angiograms and you can see immediately after the uh, 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 placing the uh, FredX 
in the patient and they're already showing the significant contrast stasis into the residual aneurysm and with the competing flow from the, the basal artery and the P1. And this is my last case and uh, this is actually a super challenging, uh, this patient and I have been following up for years and I uh, cannot treat her because she has liver failure requiring a liver transplant and uh, uh, so I, uh, I could not use any of the antiplatelet therapy on her and her platelet counts is usually live into the 20s. Fortunately, this year she actually get her liver transplant despite the big aneurysm and uh, unfortunately the uh, CTA has shown that, that her aneurysm enlarged significantly over the last couple of years and uh, so I actually uh, took her to uh, treating once she's uh, successfully recovered from her liver transplant and uh, you can see this is the angiogram showing her she has a near giant cavernous carotid aneurysm as well as a uh, MCA bifurcation aneurysm on the, the left side. So this is the, uh, and uh, this aneurysm is so large and it compressed the cavernous carotid artery and uh, was uh, a significant uh, compromise. And uh, you can see on the deployment, uh, once you anchor the uh, devices in the ophthalmic segment of the, the uh, uh, in your, uh, of the carotid artery and uh, the rest, despite with the, the extreme torturosity, the, uh, the essentially no uh, neck through the, the aneurysm and uh, the device uh, opens up uh, without much manipulation and uh, uh, once I crossed the aneurysm neck and uh, then uh, the rest of it and uh, just uh, continue to deploy using exactly the same technique and uh, this aneurysm in the past when I use uh, pipeline or evolve and uh, usually will take probably a, in terms of the deployment uh, it's not infrequent the uh, multiple uh, unsheathing, resheathing and the repositioning and uh, sometimes even potentially requiring reaccess of the aneurysm and uh, this one really went very very smoothly and I was anticipating for a much harder uh, battle for this and uh, this is actually uh, again, in a very large aneurysm, and uh, she has significant headache, and she showed up in the emergency room one week later, and our ER got to the CTA, and uh, you can see the aneurysm is completely thrombosed already in this patient. Uh, so, and I would not be delivering, and most of us, and uh, realizing the importance of using dual antiplatelet therapy uh, with uh, the flow diverting technology and I use the acumetrics to evaluating the, the efficacy of this so very uh, r uh, religiously and uh, obviously using the tracks uh, support systems and uh, obviously at the beginning and using the dynas uh, any combing CT technology you have to evaluate the device deployment in the, its apposition with uh, the uh, parent vessel and uh, with patients and I think this technology is really helping me and uh, to harness the, the, the benefits and the power of flow diverting technology to treating some of the very, very challenging and the difficult uh, patient. And uh, in summary, the most important advantage of uh, the devices it's, is really how simple and how easy it is to use and of course with the, the 21 system available to treating some of the uh, vessels that's, uh, uh, that's essentially not existing with the other uh, uh, other companies' uh, product and uh, potentially with the adding the surface modification, it can be less thrombogenic and uh, uh, hopefully in the, the near future we can uh, reduce the, the need of dual antiplatelet therapy and using only mono uh, uh, antiplatelet therapy. Thank you very much for your time.